All right, now let's talk about the solved palate a little bit. You have the active solved palate and the, and the reactive solved palate. It uh, could be if I do one thing, it, my solved palate responds and reacts somehow. Sometimes I can work directly with the solved palate, and that is uh, usually much less efficient. Some people raise the solved palate like that, and when they do, all of a sudden they get a reaction in the throat, and the throat gets a little bit like that. Oh, oh, so. Any number of things can happen. When that happens, it can just sound like you're choking and gargle, it gets uh, guttural, it gets falls, everything falls back, it, it changes the resonance of the voice. Sometimes it makes you sound like you're. Uh, uh, your voice is heavier than it really is because I could do this sort of when I was uh, if I lower my larynx so with muscles like that my soft palate goes up as a reaction so now we have a reactive palate but it's reacting in a way that it should not be because the action that caused that reaction should never happen in the first place so the best way to do it is to be as natural <laughs> that word natural natural uh, we want to be as natural as possible, and the most natural way of all is the fact that we speak a language all day long. Every day of our lives, we speak a language. Some languages, when they're spoken, affect the soft palate. They either bring it down, or they raise it up. The question is, where do I raise the palate if I raise it? See? Uh, Lily Lemon said in her book to raise the soft palate up and forward. Some guys believe that you should pull, you know, pull the soft palate straight up. So if I go up and forward, I go, Another way to do it is to go straight up. Some people think up and back. So the problem with um, judging it in quality of sound by quality of sound is everybody has a different idea. Some people love the big dark ones, some people love the real bright one. Uh, you have people that, that didn't raise the soft palate at all, you know, so they, they did things like this. <laughs> See, if you're looking for a bite in the voice and all metal and all penetrating quality that you can muster, then you don't want to raise your palate because it darkens the voice, generally. These are all general, <laughs> general observations. Uh, now, shall I actively do something with my soul? Let's say I raise it up and forward. <laughs> so Leonard Warren called what he did with the soul pilot the pre-sneeze. He said, what do you do uh, uh, right before you sneeze? <laughs> See? Of course, he had a fabulous voice, but it could have been a fabulous natural voice without without raising the palate that way. But for him, it worked like charm. Uh, now, what happens if I let's say I'm going to do something to cause a reaction with my soft palate? I'm going to say uh, Giovanni Lamperti's whole school was based on the <coughs> what he called the open throat in the Italian school, which is the same shape as the A vowel in the Italian word S T A I stai. So if you say, come vai, dove stai, right? You say, you say all these, come uh, stai, uh, dove vai, cosa fai, ah, ah. If you do that, what happens to the soft palate? See? So I'm going to sing like that. Now, is that all right? Some people don't like it. They go, it's too bright and too metallic and doesn't have enough color. That's possible. You've always got to make sure that that the voice you're listening to could have had color if they'd done something else. Some, some voices are, uh, I don't want to know where mine is, don't tell me, but um, some voices are of better natural quality. That's the term they use. But it could be they have a naturally uh, raised soft palate. Some people, you know, they have an accent when they talk like this, oh, how nice to see you. Yeah. Would, you would you like to go downtown and get something to eat? And the soft palate is up the whole time, see? So that's where the, all the, a lot of this stuff about uh, using Bob instead of M. Like, ma, 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 the, the soft palate comes down and it sort of flattens in the back. Ma, and when it does that, my voice gets in, my, in, my, in, the, nasal, in the nasal resin, the nasal cavity. Ma, ma, you can hear that. Uh, Babies don't do that. When we imitate, imitate babies, you go, ah, 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 but the truth is they say, ah. They go, ah, ah, 
<laughs> ah, 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 So the soft palates are raised some in some shape, or, or the nose will be open. But the nose is absolutely closed in babies. So closing the nose used to be a, one of the main uh, parts of a, of a very, very popular way to sing. Uh, Caruso was, was, of course, the greatest of singers, but he also had a certain kind of technique. And he said in his book, it must be about page two or three, very early in the book, he said, never sing into the nasal cavity, it's against all the rules of song. And then he said something like, uh, the ah vowel is very far back and low in the throat. Well, what does that do to soft palate? Very far back and low in the throat. So I'm going to say ah here. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. What did it do to my soft palate? Did it rise? Did it come down? Did it go forward? Did it go backward? What, what do you think happened? Franco Corelli was the one who talked about uh, singing behind the glottal stroke. So we go, ah, 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 ah. I'm behind the glottal stroke now. So if I sing back there, if I sing, if I go, ah, 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 that obviously has no tone at all. So that's way up here on the, that's what they, what they call uh, singing on the glottal stroke. And it's, it's really, uh, to uh, Caruso called that singing too far forward in the throat. If I go, ah, ah, uh, 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 in order to get off that soft pad, off the uh, uh, glottal stroke, I have to get behind it. So I go, ah, 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 Where's my soft palate now? Did, is that what I use to get off my glottal stroke, or is it a reaction? Uh, in other words, it's always a question, is, is it an action, or is it a reaction? If I just try to lift my soft paddle like that, I can do it, but I don't feel as connected to my, to my diaphragm doing that. I'd rather do something in the way I breathe that causes my soft palate to find a nice, comfortable, uh, position that where everything stays relaxed. So if I breathe way down in my in my, uh, Joan Sullivan says she breathed up her rectum. A lot of singers talk about breathing in the buttocks. Like the, my old teacher when I met her, she said, "What are for buttocks?" I said, "What? Just sit down." She said, "No, for to breathe then to like big weather balloons." It was once a very popular uh, uh, concept is to breathe way down the spine. Like the spine is a is a pipe that's leading into a couple of. Uh, uh, weather balloons back there. If I breathe like that, remember the third law of motion. For every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. So if I breathe down and back this way, something has to go up and forward that way. So if it is my soft palate, you realize now we're back to Lily Lehman, which is the soft palate goes up and forward. She also said in her book, you should use, uh, you should move the back wall of the nose forward. Well, what does that mean? See? So which way shall I sing? If I'm happy, did my soft palate go up? Did the way did being happy make me breathe in a certain way that caused my soft palate to go up? So this business of active and reactive is a is a big deal. If you make it active. You have to be careful. So let's fall back again on what we've done all our lives, which is talk. What words do I say that would flatten my soft palate? Right? Singing is one of them. If I say sing, it puts my voice way down here in what they used to call the false mask, which is down here. A lot of singers try to sing that way, singing the M, in other words. Ma, 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 that's in the nose. But we have in English, and English language, and other languages have it too, uh, uh, they have a, uh, an NG, hung, it's right here. Hung, now I was taught way back when, 65 years ago, uh, that when you use the NG, you should sing over that line. You, 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 you find a line is going, a resonance line is going across here. Hung, now, I went over the line. Of course, when I did that, my soft palate went up and forward. So this time, the soft palate is reactive to an idea or to a voice placement idea. See? If I just lift it up and forward, 
necessarily sing that way. Uh, what if I lift it straight up? <laughs> that works, but the, the, the language I'm speaking becomes a little bit distorted. Hello, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. See? Uh, but in other words, how should we speak? We're supposed to be saying sty, remember? Come sty, the vai, cause the fi. Ah, ah. If I do that, and I really do keep my phonation that way. La, no, and I see all the words there. La, so some people speak language that, the languages that are much, much more, let's call it nasal. The American language in general has spoken a lot, but we have words like why, why, see? We have, we have, we have words that, that go prison, uh, laughing. A lot of those words come up in the, in the, in the notes. When you think of Italian, how do I say to sing in Italian? I don't say singing, I say cantare. <laughs> Beautiful, right? We got it from German, singing, sing, singing, right? So if I breathe, ich atme. I breathe, but when I say breathe, I say a B in front of it. What does the B do? Ba 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 ba. If I say M, I get ma. So M is is lousy for a number of reasons. One reason it takes some of the color out of the voice, but mainly it doesn't carry as well. Now I'm going to try to to. Uh, I'm going to try to phonate my vowels in a way that my, my molars and my back teeth get involved in the sound. What do you think of that idea? Now, I'm singing way back here. Ah, ah, ah. What do you think my soft palate did? How do I sing Bob, for instance? We know that the B closes the nose. How do I go? La ba 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 So the ideal tone in Italy for many, many years was described as being a chiaroscuro tone, a clear, dark tone. It's a term they stole from painting. When the painters, they talked about the, 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 the clear, dark uh, qualities of, of, of lighting, the way they would write in the light in a, in a, in a great painting. And they wanted chiaroscuro. They wanted some light, but they also wanted some dark sections. But somebody coined that term in singing, and, they, and it, it became a chiaroscuro, clear, dark. So here's clear. And here's scuro. I have to access all the air down in my lungs to make sure that I've got the, the, the darkness, the mellowness working. If I put them together, then I say sty, but with my breath way down in my body again. So we have the reactive uh, soft palate, the active soft palate. Soft palates that we, we depend on the breathing to take care of it for us. Sometimes it's in the uh, phonation, if I, the way I say the word, right? And sometimes it's all just simple about the nose. If you hold your nose, go, and it has no effect on the tone, then, uh, then you're, you're not saying your nose. I go, it ends instantly if I'm in, in my, what Caruso called, never singing to the nasal cavity. So if I'm in the nasal cavity, the minute I close my nose, you can hear the tremendous change in the sound. But if I'm above my nose, according to him, that is already a tremendous positive because you're not, you're, you're not singing nasally. Leonard Warren did what he called a pre-sneeze. So you go, right? Someone else will take a deep breath in a way that causes the soft powers to go up like that. Some people cry. What's the noise of a soft palate when I cry? You hear that? My soft palate is way up here like this. So I just want to touch on this subject a little bit. It's one of the little subjects that comes up in our encyclopedia. Uh, 
and it's you know active reactive self palate okay all right so I hope this will give you some clues and something to think about what you do and you know as you go along you find out which ones you like which ones you, the public likes who's who, with whom are you having success so <coughs> sometimes <laughs> if you raise the salt palate in a way that makes the voice much bigger, much darker, you know, people get confused and say, oh, well, you're a young dramatic singer. You're some kind of heroic singer. You're a hell, young Heldon tenor, in my case, right? Uh, or, or, or you're really a baritone singer as a tenor, aren't you? You, you hear all this stuff. The medical if that your priest sees, I go, la, ha, 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 ha. See? Well, it doesn't sound like a light lyric tenor when I do that. I could go la 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 I let my soft palate flatten instead of raising it. And when I do raise it, if I raise it, I tend up to believe, uh, after all these many, many years, I believe that the greatest singers lifted soft palate up and forward. And uh, there's, there's no doubt about it that a few of them said, yes, absolutely. Uh, I know that Joan Sutherland sang on a hook in the back of her neck. And that's like behind the glass hook, like like Franco Corelli. Uh, so if I go, what's my soft palate doing? If I go, ah, 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 so I will leave it to you now to play with that a little bit and see what you think about it. Okay, let's see if you have any particular favorite that you like, and the truth is they're all usable, and uh, they're, uh, they've all been used by someone, believe me, these are not my original ideas, okay? Okay, bye.